Hi everyone, welcome to week seven of Nutrition Bites. My name is Kelsey and I am the dietitian here at Lifestyle Medical. All right, so today we are going to talk about one of my favorite recipes for tofu scramble. I love this recipe. I eat it for breakfast or lunch or dinner. It doesn't really matter. It's just one of my favorites. All right, so today we're going to talk about the ingredients in the recipe, then we'll do a little bit of myth busting around the topic of soy, and then we'll talk about just some of the components of soy as well as the health benefits, and then we'll talk a little bit about nutritional yeast, and then I'll present the weekly challenge. All right, so here is the recipe for this tofu scramble. Now, I like to use jalapeno peppers instead of bell peppers, but you can definitely make that switch if you don't want it as spicy. Um, and some of the other vegetables in this tofu scramble are mushrooms and shallots, but feel free to switch it up for whatever veggies you have on hand or whatever sounds good. All right, so let's do a little bit of myth busting on the topic of soy. Through the years, you've probably heard a lot of claims on soy about oh, it's good for you, or it's bad for you. And so I just want to lay all of that out right here and kind of debunk some of those myths. So a question that you might be asking is, should I avoid soy? And my answer to you is quite simple. The only individuals that should avoid soy altogether are those people who just don't like the taste of it or are those people who are allergic to it. Everyone else is free to add it in to their diet. Another question you might have heard, does soy cause cancer? It's actually quite the opposite. Soy has been associated with lower risk of certain types of cancers, including breast cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, prostate, and ovarian cancer. You also might have heard some conflicting messages around soy and thyroid health. Uh, you might have heard that soy causes hypothyroidism. Um, what actually is important is if you have hypothyroidism and you're taking thyroid medication, what you should be focused on is a consistent intake of soy. So eating about the same amount through the day or through the week and not changing and going higher and lower, but keeping it consistent rather than avoiding it altogether. That's what's more important. All right. So here are a few more facts about soy. Soy is one of the few vegan sources of, plant, of complete protein. Well, what is a complete protein? So proteins are made up of these building blocks called amino acids. And our body breaks down the protein and uses these amino acids to build up other proteins and our tissues and our cells and our body. Now our body can actually make on its own some of these amino acids but not all of them. So there are certain amino acids that have been called essential amino acids, which means that we must eat them in order to provide our body with them. So a, a complete protein is a protein that has all of those essential amino acids. So animal products, meat products are complete sources of protein, but if you follow a whole foods plant-based diet, soy is a source of complete protein as well as quinoa and pistachios are also complete proteins. Uh, soy, depending on which form you consume it in, can be a source of fiber. Uh, it also can be a good source of some omega-3s as well as iron. And it is high in a phytochemical called isoflavones. And this is what has often been studied in the research to have benefits. Uh, it's also rich in many other vitamins and minerals. And there are lots of ways that you can enjoy soy. Uh, you can enjoy the soybean as it is. You can drink soy milk. You can eat tofu or tempeh or edamame or miso. These are all soy products. All right, so there are lots of health benefits of soy and most uh, commonly studied are the health benefits surrounding cancer risk. So research has indicated that there is an association with intake of soy and a lower risk for breast cancer, as well as recurring breast cancer. Uh, it may also lower the risk for other types of cancers, like I mentioned earlier. It may improve heart health, especially when it is used as a substitute for animal products, and it may improve the risk of osteoporosis. All right, so this recipe in particular calls for nutritional yeast. So I thought I would take a few moments to talk about what nutritional yeast is and uh, some of the benefits and ways to use it. So nutritional yeast is an inactive yeast product that can be used as a seasoning. It's packed with B vitamins. And I just wanna note when you're purchasing uh, nutritional yeast, look and make sure that it has been fortified with vitamin B12. 
Uh, I don't think it normally contains vitamin B12, but sometimes it's added in. So if you want that in it, just make sure you're looking at the label. Uh, it also can provide a small amount of protein and fiber, as well as other minerals like zinc and selenium. So there's lots of different ways to use nutritional yeast. Uh, you can use it as a uh, topping for your popcorn. And in the article version of this, I'll link our YouTube video with the recipe. You can also use it as a seasoning on roasted vegetables or in sauces for a cheesy flavor or as a thickener. All right, so the weekly challenge. This week, I wanna challenge you to try making a tofu scramble for breakfast twice during the week. Um, alternatively, you could also swap your current milk of choice for unsweetened soy milk. And that's all I have for you guys this week. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you all again next week.